Hello everybody, this is Alitan Ishi, the host of Connect with Ali Ishi Show, and today we have this series of Book One that's Connect One World One uh, people. And today this is episode eight, and we have my friend Tammy Banyard all the way from uh, Toronto, right, uh, Tammy? Woo! Um, well, near Toronto, I'm in Woodstock, Ontario. Woodstock, Ontario. So here I have my friend uh, Tammy, and thank you very much, my friend, for accepting the invitation and for being here with us again to talk about your chapter. Be brilliant, be you. <laughs> awesome, and I brought my little friends, my little bee, my queen bee here. Oh, nice. <laughs> and then I've got my little hero bee right here. So be brilliant, be you. <laughs> nice, I love it. I love it. I love the, the, the energy. I love the little character that you brought that you are going to be part of this conversation. <laughs> so my friend, uh, back to brilliance. I know your chapter, be brilliant, be you. That's when you took action when you were, that was in 11, 11, 11. That's when you tap into your call of action. That's when we say, okay, this is time for me to start doing what speak to my heart. What is my mission in this life on November 11 at 11 a.m. When that beautiful dove hit the window, this last room window. <laughs> yeah, my, my spirit animal, right? My It became my spirit animal and it became my call to action. It's how I became the hero intelligence teacher. That little dub, um, I really believe, was my wake-up call and uh, got me on my path and purpose and passion mission. So really beautiful. Amazing, amazing. So uh, my friend uh, Tammy, like, be brilliant be you what that mean to you like in term of like be brilliant i know you are uh, advocating a lot for children about uh, brilliance and all that stuff but let's start with you and how you are conveying that message and how you are sharing that with the world be brilliant be you and how important for people to achieve their dreams and stuff right well you know here's the thing is i grew up and I didn't know my brilliance. I struggled through the school system. I struggled with self-esteem, self-worth. Um, I was nervous and apprehensive. I'm a totally different person now. Like today I'm, I'm doing calls, I'm doing interviews, I'm on TV, I do radio, like amazing things. But if you would have told me that 20 years ago before that dove hit my window, I had panic attacks, like even off um, giving a certificate at the front of an assembly, I had a panic attack. I couldn't do the smallest of things. I just didn't know my worth. I didn't know my value. I didn't know my light. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I didn't feel good and confident. And so my hero's journey was about becoming and um, becoming my best self and stepping into my brilliance, discovering my brilliance and understanding that that's the truth of who I am. Everything else was just a facade or it was just a belief system that was put and projected upon me, right? Or that I bought into. So my whole thing is that we are all born brilliant, right? Mm -hmm. We're all, they, we have that hero inside of us. And I also truly believe we have a victim inside of us and we have a little villain in, inside of us. But which one are we going to grow into? Which mm -hmm. one are we going to stand into? And which one are you going to, um, you know, to feed more? Exactly. Feed more, right? We're going to either feed our hero mm -hmm. or our victim or our villain. And we know that if we want to live our best life, it's best to lead with our hero. So that's the whole concept of um, be brilliant, be you, and stepping into our brilliance. And it's so funny, um, Leo, before I came in, because I love our spirit animals, I picked a spirit card animal just before I came on. And the beautiful thing about it is this is B for badger, and it's <laughs> badger spirit, and it says be fearless and bold. Mm, love it. <laughs> and any action you have to take, you have to be fearless and you have to be bold. Any dream you want to achieve, you have to be fearless and you have to be bold. And my friend, here you mentioned something in page 113, second paragraph. You said, sometimes life grabs you in an in instant and force you to take notice. The wake up call that asks you to step into something bigger than yourself. When the universe asks you to be bold and brave, here, be brave and bold again, come out to move into the unknown. That scary place that no one wants to enter alone or sober. How beautiful is that? Right. And it's so true. I mean, 
I had to break tradition. I had to break patterns. I had to break beliefs. I had to break away from a lot of people, right, that I had gathered around because, again, we are conditioned by our friends, our family, those things. And if we want to do something different and start a different pathway, we have to be courageous, we have to be bold, and we have to be fearless. Mm -hmm. And for me, I went inward and upward. I found my strength, my inner strength, my higher self, my hero self. It was an inward journey. Um, and that was the big thing is I had to build that mentally, emotionally before I had the courage to step away from what everybody was doing. And mm -hmm. that little bird, that call to action is, was my, you know, my, my step into that. Amazing. Amazing. And also you mentioned here about the transformation. I know transformation, take courage, transformation. Can you hear me good, uh, Tammy? Yeah. Okay transformation yeah, yeah. sorry yeah the transformation take courage and it take like uh, to be fearless and bold here you mentioned something about when that little bird hit my window i realized i had to reevaluate my life and i decided to change everything my perspective my value my relationship my beliefs and my purpose while my transformation has been filled with trail and rebuild uh, trial and tribulation the result was worth it. It transformed how I teach, how I think, how I live, and how I see myself and the world around me. Mm, yeah, right. It's it now I see my best self. And, and it wasn't just a physical transformation. You wouldn't recognize me 20 mm -hmm. years ago, Alio uh, or Ali. I mm -hmm. was uh way overweight. <laughs> I was very sick. The doctor said by 44, I'd have no hands and feet. Oh, really? Wow. I was that overweight. I was that sick, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. I didn't know my worth. I didn't know my value. Um, I was very insecure. And so physically, mentally and emotionally, and also my life, you wouldn't recognize it. Not the friends, um, not what I'm doing, how I teach. Everything was a transformation to stepping into who mm -hmm. I wanted to become exactly and the transformation my friend tammy it's always it's 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 everything built together to form who we are our thought our environment our habit our food everything so if we are changing to become a different people we have to change all the stuff that we're holding us back right and i want to say <coughs> to you, Ali, it, it wasn't just it wasn't overnight right this has been a 20 year transformation and one percent i had I had my new self of where I wanted to go in 20 years, right? My future. So you self. had a vi you had a vision. That's right. And there, I just started to change one habit, one ha behavior, one uh, food, right? Uh, intake, one action. You know, day after day. And as I was doing that, I got stronger and stronger and stronger. And why you want to do it slowly and gradually is because it becomes permanent right? Persistence, perseverance, one step at a time, the 1% rule. As you do things over and over again, and you, you develop a habit, it creates a new pathway and, and pattern for you. So we don't want to do things overnight. And you can't rush it. And you can't be impatient with the process. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. And the processes take time. Because a lot of people think I want to be successful. I want to be like uh, uh, achieving all my dreams overnight, but that's impossible. It takes it take, it take step. It takes like a days, month, maybe years. But as long as you are persistent, as long as you are consistent, as long as you, you are in the right environment and you follow in the right, uh, the right uh, process. Well, and it's your purpose and your passions, right? So when you're in alignment, I believe, with your purpose and your passion, mm -hmm. that transforms us right? Because it lights us up, right? It, 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 it motivates us, it inspires us, it keeps us going. But mm -hmm. if you're not in the right relationships, you're not in the right job, you're not in the right, you know, field, you're not doing what really lights you up. To me, you know, you, you mask that in, in food and in alcohol and drama and addictions and whatever the addiction is, because you don't you you don't want to face it and it's a lot harder to face it than sometimes it is to just do something immediate that's going to distract you mm -hmm. but the whole point is you know had i not started this journey 20 years ago where would i be today but sometimes like i always as, as we talk about like 20 years we were not ready 
And God was preparing you for this moment that you are living now. So all these 20 years, you were not a waste. You were like a learning. Yeah. And a lot of people just said, I wish I did that back then. I wish, but right. no, you were not ready. When the student is ready, the teacher appears. <laughs> well, and that's it. And But part of it is like, who do I want to be in the next 20 years? Like, I'm taking action each day, mm -hmm. right? Every day I take action right here, right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know I'm going to get closer and closer to what it is I desire. But it's, it's, it's being um, active and aware that you want where you want to go. Because if you don't, you're just floating all over the place. You have no game plan. You have no goals. You have no objectives. The universe, the world is just going to take you wherever you land. So mm -hmm. it's about deliberate intention too. And okay. you're right. Like un when I wasn't ready, I was completely unconscious. But that bird awakened me. And that was my moment to get back onto my path and my purpose. Definitely. And people don't have to be like a leaf. They were blown with the wind, wherever the wind taking them. They have to be like a rock heavy. They know where they are going or stuff like that. And you mentioned at the beginning about like whatever you feed, it becomes. Mm -hmm. So if you feed the victim, I am a victim. You, you blame the circumstances. You blame your family. You blame your friend. You will be like that victim. You will never achieve anything. But if you have that personality or that, that, that mentality that I can achieve everything I want, right. your subconscious, whatever you give it, will, will get. 100%. The victim, <laughs> the victim is helpless because mm -hmm. you're not in power, right? And the, mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and the villain is reactive. It's pl blaming it on everybody else. Mm -hmm. So when you're the victim or you're the villain, you're reacting and you're not you're, – you're not, getting to make choices with deliberate intention. But mm -hmm. when you step into the hero, right? The hero says, okay, what do I have in my circle of influence? What can I change right here, right now? And you step into accountability. The victim and the villain don't take accountability. Every, it's everybody else's fault. And if it's everybody else's fault, you can't move in, a, in any direction. So even my health, when my health was so poor, I mm -hmm. thought, you know, I could sit there and be the victim and say, oh, my God, you know, I'm going to be, you know, have no hands and feet by 44 because this is the, the fate I've been given. And I'm the victim and everybody helped me and endorse this belief system. And now I'm just helpless. And, and or I could or I could be angry and say, you know, who did all this to me? Who was responsible for all of this? You mm -hmm. know, and try to deflected off of myself where I could take full responsibility and said my life by my design and if I'm going to change my fate it's going to be in my hands alone and that's what I did in stepping into my brilliance in stepping into my boldness in stepping into accountability for my own life definitely definitely my friend accountability we are responsible for that and we have to be the one driving our own vehicle we have to be in the in the driver's side not the passenger side and you mentioned something about the ugly duckling. Mm. That's a beautiful story that sometimes we believe what we've been told. Mm -hmm. and sometimes we, we, we assume what people say, maybe that's true. But we have to dive into ourselves and find the truth our, uh, about ourselves by ourselves. Can you share a little bit about that ugly duckling? And the <laughs> <laughs> so, first of all, because I'm a teacher, right? And one of my superpowers, Ali, is storytelling. Mm -hmm. I brought in the, the power of the ugly duckling because I use it in the classroom to talk to children about their self worth, their self esteem, how they perceive themselves, and it's just such a powerful little story because that little duckling, right, believed that it was a duckling. And because it didn't look like a duckling, it didn't sound like a duckling, everybody bullied it. Mm -hmm. And, and you know what I love about the ugly duckling, it didn't stay on the farm. It didn't stay where everybody was judging it. Yes, mm -hmm. the ugly duckling started to believe that that's what it, it was, because we do believe what people tell us. And we do listen to that from everyone else. And, and, and it didn't understand its, its brilliance right from the beginning. But it kept going. It went, you know, to a house and it, and then it was being bullied and wasn't being appreciated. I say, go where you were celebrated, not tolerated. It kept going. It kept looking for a new and better place. It didn't, it, it didn't stay there, the little ugly duckling. And what's so amazing is that when it looks down in the, in, in, into the, the water, 
after it had seen all these beautiful, beautiful swans and it admired these beautiful swans and it looks down in, into the water and it sees the reflection as a swan. And it was like this awakening, this beautiful awakening that, oh my goodness, like I am one of those beautiful birds. And I mm-hmm. like, that's what happened to me. I was like, oh my goodness, I had seen myself as this ugly duckling, right? Low self-esteem, no self-worth. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden when I just kept going, I kept following my pathway and I kept moving and moving and moving into different and better places that were more in alignment with who I am. And then I looked in the mirror one day and I'm like, I love me. I'm beautiful. Like I am awesome. I am brilliant. Mm-hmm. And and that's where I feel like that story is a reflection of my story. But mm. you know, just keep going. Like don't stay where you are not loved and honored and, and accepted. Amazing, amazing. I love this this story about the ugly duckling. It's the same as like the butterfly, how the transformation, how we change, how it realizes it's it can fly, it can be beautiful, and it's just the process and trust the process and always have to be open to new idea and open to achieve more and to 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 succeed. And here in, in page 116, you mentioned something about hero tips to remember. I, I really love those 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 tips here. There are two sides to everything. Whether you believe it or not, every problem does have a solution. And every situation can be either positive or negative. That includes even the most challenging one. It all depends on how you look at it. Mm, I love that. And, you know, I teach with teaching tools, right? So one thing I always do is I use the coin, Mm -hmm. um, you know, as, as a teaching tool. And I say, you're right. So there's always for every problem, there's a solution. And for every solution, if you're that pessimist, you're going to find the problem, <laughs> right? You'll get somebody who's like, no matter what solution you give them, they're going to find the problem. And then there's a third part of the coin, and that is the edge of the coin. And the edge of the coin opens you up to infinite possibilities, Ali. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this is it. Just because we don't understand the problem or the solution yet doesn't mean that it isn't one, it just means we haven't discovered it yet. So part of it is like, always be, have that childlike sense of wonder and curiosity, imagination to be in quest and search of that that solution, right? Whether it's for ourselves, whether it's for others, but whether it's work relationship, um, you know, always be like that childlike sense of wonder and look for the infinite possibilities. Definitely, definitely. And the second, Second point that you shared here in Hero Tips, remember everything has a purpose. No small deed goes unnoticed. And even the smallest act of kindness is never wasted. Each and every one of us has a dream for a better life and we all have the power to make a false difference in this world. Ah, well, you know what that brings me to is right now I've got a little um, character, Annie the Ant. And Annie the Ant is courageous. She is bold. And, and if you think and know anything about ants, they're really extraordinary, right? They're super small, but they are mighty. They can w- carry like 50 pounds their body weight, right? Times mm-hmm. their body weight. But what I love about Annie the Ant is ants are very systematical. They're very orderly. But this little Annie the Ant, she's trying to create a new and different pathway for herself. She's breaking traditions and she's going away. And she's on her own little hero's journey to find her purpose, her passion. And that's not typical of the ants because ants follow very dutiful, right? Mm -hmm. So little Annie the Ant has to take a lot of courage to to break away from her traditions. And, And how I'm bringing this into storytelling and with our our HQ education program and camps and, and teacher training is how are we like Annie the ant, right? How many of us just follow the routine, follow the structure, are afraid to break tradition? And how many of us, you know, are bold enough and brave enough to step away from, from routine and, and really find our purpose and our passion? And then she has this beautiful dream, Annie the ant, is to create this utopiary world. She wants all the ants and all the insects to work in harmony and love and peace with one another. So she's got this huge dream in her heart, but she can't realize her dream if she just maintains the status quo and keeps following the structure that she's been built into and was born into. Mm, I love it. <laughs> it's amazing how much we can we can teach our children just from story and the children 
open because they listen and they they they, they, they really engage with story and when we are using those uh, the <laughs> story those... stick ali and that's the thing so i teach two things right one thing is my teaching is my superpower. Mm -hmm. So when we hear it as a story, we retain 90%. When we hear it as a fact, we retain five, 10 to 15. So that's huge. So if you're going to teach your child something, teach it through a story that shifts their beliefs and that shifts their behaviors. Mm. If also the other really powerful way we learn is teaching it to someone else. When we're not just the passive listener learner, when we actually have to teach it to someone else. And when we give children stories, that's something easy for them to teach with. So this is why if you really want to hit home and, and help your child or, 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 you know, a spouse or friend or somebody really understand and, and have them really connect with it on an emotional level, because stories also connect with our hearts. Mm -hmm. So it helps the kinesthetic learner. It helps the visual spatial learner. It helps the, you know, um, all types of learners understand it and then it resonates in their heart and if it resonates here it's going to shift us here mm. super love powerful love it love it and that's <clears throat> you mentioned here too like the third point is your three untapped superpower are your powerful imagination that's number one your intuition number two and your desire to do the thing that light you up mm. right intuition mm -hmm imagination imagination desire to live and you desire because desire is in inside of us so that's that if you desire something you'll go to the end of the earth to find it mm -hmm. so again you want to help if children love learning right and it's inside versus i have to versus i want to they're going to get behind their own learning they're going to get behind you know their their career they're going to get behind it if there's a passion Mm -hmm. And their intuition is, is always our higher self guiding us. Mm -hmm. So when you can be tuned and in, tapped into that, it's helping you to stay connected to your desire and our imagination. It's, it's where allows us to tap into infinite possibilities, creativity. It's where we sometimes we're born with it. We're always born with it. But sometimes as we go through the school system, it's stripped away from us which is mm -hmm. what what robs us of our genius definitely definitely and sometimes school like it's uh, it's almost like it's buried those, <clears throat> those imagination it's almost like it's it's kind of like uh, those, it. it's exactly so uh, uh any parent that listening to this like if your children have a good imagination just like feed it support it and let them dream because that yeah. is what would uh, help them learn more than what they can learn at school probably <laughs> right and foster it but the other thing too is is support them in their intuition you know mm -hmm. we look at animals animals know how to like look at you talked about the butterfly they can migrate all the way from canada to mexico all mm -hmm. on their you know intuitiveness on how to get there Mm -hmm. We have access to that inside of us. We just squash it because we overthink it with mm -hmm. facts and information. And if we could embrace it in children and teach them to trust their intuition, trust their gut, mm -hmm. right? That's so important. Then we can support them in making better decisions. Exactly. Before we go to the third, to the, to the third part, I know this, 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 this chapter is full of golden nuggets, full of a lot of stuff that you can, can learn from. And this chapter in book one, Let's Connect. And if you want to be part of this journey, one, let's connect one word, one people and make a difference in people's imagination, make a difference in people's dreams, buy this book and we will be back after this. So this is book one. Let's connect one world, one people on Amazon. So last year we made the, we made like we, we raised one thousand dollars. We supported the Boys and Girls Club. We supported the YWCA and Queen of Heart. This year our dream is bigger to double that or triple that, so we can support more children and make more dreams come true. So let's join us on this journey to make a difference. And we will go to the the last part of those beautiful hero tips to remember. Don't waste your hurts. Turn your mess into a message. Believe it or not, life is always happening for you, not to you. Learn to take your pain and transform that into your great peril 
allow your struggle to help you grow into a loving and compassionate person. You know what? This is my journey, right? I look at my hurts through the school system. I struggled through the school system, mm -hmm. but it, it helped me, Ali, to become the teacher I am today. Mm -hmm. So had I just flown through the school system, there would have been no reason, motivation, incentive for me to want to go into the school system and, and create a new and better way for children that supports all learners, all mm -hmm. geniuses, all, all different types of kids. The mm -hmm. other thing is, had I not, you know, had that call wake up call and been so sick, so unhealthy, so overweight, so mentally, emotionally, I wouldn't have been on the journey to health and well-being. So 20 years of focusing on my mental, physical and emotional well-being is why mm -hmm. I look amazing at 52. <laughs> right. So that's the whole thing. I'm brilliant. I know it and I'm embracing it. Right. <laughs> and you're living it. <laughs> I, I own it. <laughs> right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Everybody else should be owning it too. And and that's the whole piece is I'm not comparing myself to anybody else, but mm -hmm. me. Where I was at 30 and where I am at 50 is a transformation. You wouldn't recognize me today with, with who I was. And that's the whole piece, right? Is I'm not trying to look and compare myself to a supermodel, right? I'm just comparing me to me and my journey and where I've come and the work um, that I've invested in myself and my transformation. And that's mm -hmm. what I celebrate. And this is like a proof right here. It's just like when, 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 when you trust yourself, when you be you and be brilliant and tap into that imagination that is inside of you, you will achieve the impossible because you, you tap out from that victim mentality to a mentality of I am to own it, I own it, I am accountable, I'm responsible for my life and you live that life the way you want it absolutely i invested in me right so that's it my biggest investment was in myself mm -hmm. and now i'm not just offering lip service right i am truly embodying you know my health my leadership my head my heart my um health and my hands right these are all things that i show by example um, mm -hmm. you know, you, you can't be somebody who's really sick and unhealthy and then tell others to be that mm -hmm. and it's, it's lip service. So if I, and I realized that I thought if I want to be a hero teacher, if I want to be an example, I have to live it. I have to do it. I have to go through the motions. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say to parents, you know, you, you can't be telling kids don't smoke and then you're smoking in front of them. <laughs> It's, yeah. not, it's serious. And I say, you know, it's not about telling, it's about showing, it's about living, it's be the example. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the best advice I can have. Whatever it is you want to inspire others, be it first. Exactly. Don't tell me what to do, but show me what to do. Show Absolutely. me how you do it. And that's uh, children follow what you, your, your action, not your word. Absolutely. So, you know, that's the whole thing. And part of, you know, be brilliant, be you is owning it too. At whatever stage you are, and that's the whole thing. You don't have to be at your ultimate self to embrace, you know, where you're at in the journey. To me, mm -hmm. you know, at every stage, celebrate where you're at. Every, there's no, you know, there's no, this is better than this. Like I love and honor every part I am on my journey. Even when I was, you know, maybe not at my best self, I still uh, appreciate that I was there because it's because of that. If I wasn't there, I couldn't have made out, uh, become who I am today. So again, that's where I celebrate my mistakes and I celebrate, you know, all my, my failures are opportunities for me to fail forward and, mm -hmm. and redevelop new practices. Definitely. And everything come, come through love. Love is the key for everything. Cause when you love what you do, when you love who you are, when you love what you do, it will reflect first on you. It will reflect first on, 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 on your family. It will reflect first, stirred on the world that's surrounding you. Absolutely. Love is the key, my friends. And uh, you finish the chapter with this amazing thing. You said your mission and your determination is to teach children how to consciously tap into their superpower to create magic, transformation, and change in their lives and in the world using their miraculous mind, body, heart, hand, intuition passion talent and personality to impact their life and others teaching them to uh, teaching them that they all have a reason for being and helping every child seek greater purpose 
and meaning in the world that is the truth of who we are one humanity and one world the hero the hero in me see the hero the hero in you <laughs> so that's what, what what a mission a mission is 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 amazing and uh I can see that's probably that's why you are always happy that's why you're always like energetic because you are living what is your purpose what is your passion a lot of people they, they, they strive for it for a goal for a dream but you could achieve your goal and you will be still miserable you'll be Absolutely. maybe happy for achieving it for one month two months one year but what's next but when you have a mission a yeah. vision that so you strive, you wake up happy, you sleep happy, you work happy, whatever you do is happy. So that is the mission that everybody should have a mission. That's the mission, you know, <laughs> to follow, be, a, be in alignment with your purpose and passion, be in alignment with your North Star, be in alignment with what lights you up every day. If you mm -hmm. live every day, right, um, your best life, then at the end of your life, you've mm -hmm. lived your best life. So mm -hmm. prepare it for a day. Like, how do you live and visualize your very best day? What, what do you want to do? How do you want to wake up in the morning? Who do you want to surround yourself with each and every mm -hmm. day? Because each and every day is a collection, a collaboration of your life. So mm -hmm. just focus on your ultimate day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So my friend, A, B, C, one, two, three. Attitude, behavior, Attitude. choice. Attitude, behavior, and choices. choices. One, two, three one two three right so it's basically those mm -hmm. are the steps the action steps to creating your very best life mm -hmm. so it starts all with the attitude my friend because attitude it's just guy because they said you have if you have a bad attitude it's almost like a flat tire will get you nowhere right and attitude sets the tone for your altitude so attitude creates your altitude if you've got a bad attitude you're never going to be able to reach Mm -hmm. those dreams right so it starts with that and then behaviors and beliefs those are the things that each and every day you need to do and then choices are the things that you 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 have to assess right mm -hmm. so you have a choice you can either make one percent a choice that's going to improve your life and the lives of others or one percent that's going to not improve yourself or others mm -hmm. and if you could add those one percents up over one year five years ten years that's when you see the big difference. Definitely. Either Definitely. this way or this way. <laughs> right? Yeah. So again, that's why I love my story because it was, I'm living proof. I'm living example of 1% of me stepping into my better life. And where I am today is mm -hmm. an example to others of why I can speak this so, so candidly, so honestly, so authentically. Mm -hmm. and and when you put it i really like it you said like a b c one two three like a a, a attitude b behavior c is choices and one is like uh, like be your author be the author of your own life and and number two you said like you have to align with your purpose and with your passion and number three you mentioned also you be the person you were born to be mm. Yeah. And that three. comes in from in here, right? It's not an outside job. And one of the issues with school and education is they teach everything about subjects, everything mm -hmm. about the outer world, but we don't learn about our inner world. We're not, we don't, we're not taught how to be self smart. Mm -hmm. And so that's the whole piece that I do that I'm bringing to HQ education and helping people understand you know, the truth of who they are and being self-smart. And so when you're self-smart, you're discovering your diamonds within. A grain of sand has a purpose. Mm -hmm. If a grain of sand has a purpose, every human has a purpose. If we haven't discovered it, to me, we've done a huge injustice in education because we should be helping children get on that pathway and that awareness that there's something beautiful and magical inside of each and every one of us. And that should be at the forefront of teaching mm -hmm. and educating and empowering our children. Definitely, definitely. Because when the children believe in themselves and they feel that they own their own, own, own life and they feel that their imagination being come to reality, they will give more and they will really try. Well, and, and the other thing too, I agree, Ali, the other thing is, is we put them in competition. You know, are you better at math? Are you better at science? Are you better at language? Or And then if you're not, 
you you think you're stupid or you're not smart, right? And this is a huge injustice to children. And you know, we're not all smart in the same areas, but we all are smart. And this is why I bring in animal school, right? You don't you don't have owl who is trying to swim. Right. Because if you put him against a fish in the water, who's going to be the, the most successful? If and, and the other thing is, is if animals aren't in alignment with their habitat, they're miserable and unhealthy. So I always say, you know, you've got camel and, and polar bear who are besties. And mm -hmm. if both of them go to the desert, who's going to thrive? Mm -hmm. You've if got, you know, the camel. But if you put them both in, in, in the North Pole, who's going to survive, right? So it's how do we find, you know, where we should place ourselves in the world, not just following our friends. And we want to be successful. Like if you, if you, um, you, um, you know, it's the other one I love by Einstein. Um, if you expect to fit, if you um judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree it will believe its whole life that it's not smart right that mm -hmm. it's stupid and that's such an injustice because we have to find our winning formula and i the other thing i teach is turtle right turtle a sea turtle on land is very slow but put a sea turtle in the water it's extremely fast so he has a winning formula and a losing formula mm -hmm. when children are are in competition with each other it's because they're they're put against each other in where their strengths aren't. And then they internalize that and create a belief system. Definitely. Definitely. And that that definitely needs to be changed because you see a lot of children, they are suffering in the classroom and they are labels in a certain way that they shouldn't, because as you said, like the turtle can be fast in water and can be slow outside of the water. Some children too, they can be good at some something. So if we focus on what they are good at, that's when they will they will they will uh, try and they will do really good. My friend, I really appreciate your time. I, I think we can talk about this topic like uh, <laughs> like for hours and we will never finish with it, but time is, is, is chasing us. And uh, I really appreciate it. And thank you for accepting the invitation. Thank you for sharing all this golden nugget. And I advise everybody to be brilliant, to be you. This is Tammy Valerie.